Hey guys, welcome into Mr. Kern's world of Photoshop. Uh, we're looking at lesson two here. Um, we're actually going to do a couple different things in this uh, tutorial, just basically showing you some of the um, editing tools, just some basic editing tools um, to remove objects from photos, uh, to move objects from photos, and then basically uh, to clear up objects and actually let Photoshop try and guess what was behind that object to remove them completely. It's really powerful. It's really cool. Um, and I can't wait to show you. So let's just, uh, let's go ahead and hop into it here. Now at this point in time, you should have gone into Google Classroom and downloaded the photos uh, that we placed there in our lesson two tutorial. Uh, lesson two tutorial. That's difficult to say. Um, so anyway, what we're going to start with, we're going to open up uh, the face tattoo photo, which is right here. Okay. Now I'm going to move my camera up top here, just out of the way so we can look at the layers. Now this photo here, this poor girl, uh, I think there's 52 star tattoos on her face. And in fact, just a couple of years later, she had them all removed. Uh, yeah, that didn't work out. So I don't feel so bad about actually using Photoshop to remove these. I, I know it's a, it's a weird gray area to take photos of real people and to use, but in this case, uh, I don't feel too bad about it. So the first thing we're going to do, just like we always do in Photoshop is we are going to duplicate our layer here. So we have, we know where we started. We can go back at any point in time and actually look and see what progress we've made. So where it says background down here, we're going to right click that and we're going to hit duplicate layer. Okay. It says, what do you want to name it as? We're just going to name it as, um, let's do healing. Okay. Okay. So there we go. There's our background. There's our healing and it's okay. We're going to leave that lock on the background just so we don't mess with it at all. Okay. So over here on the left-hand side on your toolbar, you should have a tool over here with a little Band-Aid on it. Um, but if you right-click that, you actually see a, uh, a, a grouping of different tools here. And in fact, we have the Spot Healing Brush, the Healing Brush. There is a difference between the two. I'll show you. Uh, there's a Patch Tool, which is really neat, and then a Content Aware Move Tool. Okay, We're going to take a look at all four of these. Red Eye Tool. You can probably guess what that is just to take red eyes out of photos, um, but I don't need to show you that just now, okay? So we're going to start with our spot healing brush tool, okay? So go ahead and click on your spot healing brush tool, and we're going to go over here again. Make sure that you're clicked on the healing layer down here, and the spot healing brush tool is really neat because if you may need to resize your brush here, um, again, you can do that by clicking up here or you can literally hold down Alt on your keyboard, hold down the right mouse button on your mouse, and you can slide to the left or to the right to do that, okay? Additionally, you can also hit the little bracket button on your keyboard, um, that increases and decreases too. So a lot of different ways you can do it, but we're gonna look for a brush size about the size of this tattoo here, so, okay? So I'm looking at about 50 for my brush size. Now the spy healing brush tool basically takes information uh, from around an object and it actually looks for blemishes or things that don't necessarily belong in that selection. So in this case, it's gonna look at this, uh, this tattoo and it's gonna decide that that tattoo doesn't need to be here. So what it's gonna do then is it's gonna take information from around it and fill it in, uh, actually literally taking out that tattoo. So rather than talk about it all the afternoon, we can just click on it and you can see that it actually removes the tattoo and fairly seamlessly too. I mean, you can zoom in and you can see that it takes a little bit of the texture away from it, but that's okay at this point. So we're gonna keep on going and let's take away, eh, let's do like 10 or 15, okay? Just get used to that uh, spot healing tool, okay? Now, again, if you get to doing things that you don't want to, like if I just like click on our eyebrow, it starts taking that away. Again, control Z is your best friend. Control Z the day away. There you go. Okay. Now, you can see what happens if I do something that doesn't take up my whole brush, like let's say the corner of this star. 
it actually increases the size of it. And the reason why that is, is because what's surrounding my brush is more tattoo. So it's thinking that I wanna add more tattoo to this photo. It's actually thinking at that point in time that the skin is what the blemish is, okay? So anyway, make sure to change the size of your brush if you need to, to encapsulate the entire tattoo. And there we go. I'm just gonna clear up the nose here. Pretty good, okay? So if you wanna see what kind of difference we made, again, you can click off the eye, the eye button here, the visibility for your top layer, and actually see where we started. That's already quite a huge change, okay? All right, here we go. We're gonna go to our next tool. Again, left click on that tool with a spot healing brush tool, and this time we're gonna choose the healing brush tool, okay? Now the healing brush tool is a little bit different than the spot healing brush tool, because the healing brush tool uh, has you actually pick a spot on the face that you're wanting to replace that object with, okay? So for example, if I want more tattoos, I could, again, hold down Alt here to choose an area. You can see it turns into a little target. So if I choose that area, there you go, I clicked on it. That is now my target. And you can see that it actually takes that along with me. And I can actually place that and click, 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 okay? You can use that to place more if you wanted to. Again, I'm gonna un control Z those away. So I'm gonna choose a new target, again, holding down the Alt key on my keyboard, and I'm gonna choose a clear patch of skin, okay? So that looks like a good spot right there. Okay, let go of Alt, and now you can see, you can click over these, and you're now, replacing them with your target information. And in fact, you can actually clear up some actual blemishes there on the skin too. Okay. And then what it does is it tries to match the texture of where it is uh, originally, but brings out, uh, takes out those blemishes and whatnot. Okay. All right. So once again, it you're holding down Alt, choose your target. You can decide to bring back some of these or you can remove them all based on what your target is. Okay, so go ahead and try that out a, a few times. Kind of neat. All right, we're going to right click again. This time we're going to use our patch tool. And the patch tool is somewhat similar to what we just did. Okay, so for example, for the patch tool, you can draw a circle around something. So in this case, I'm choosing this tattoo. And this patch tool actually works probably a little bit better for larger objects than it does smaller. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click and drag it to a different area of the face, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna choose this clear area and I'm gonna let go. And what it does is it takes that original selection area and it matches that to that, okay? It brings it over. So I'm gonna hit Control D to deselect, so you can actually see the difference there. Now, again, we can go the other way with this, and I can circle this area here, the patch of clear skin, and I can click and drag down to this interesting tattoo that I created. And I can click and Control D, and we've just patched it over, okay? So it works similar, similarly uh, to the, uh, the healing brush, because you're choosing a target and you're replacing things, but it allows you to actually customize kind of shapes and sizes because you can actually choose what the area is. So there you go. That is the patch tool. Now the next one is the content aware move tool. Um, and this one kind of takes what we've learned from the healing brush and the patch tool and allows you to pick things up and move them to different areas. So for example, well, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear up, I'm gonna go to my healing brush, and I'm gonna clear up some of these areas here, okay? If you didn't go nuts with it like I did, then you're all good, but I'm just gonna clear these up, okay? There we go, okay. 
So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to my content aware move tool. Okay. Now the content aware move tool, what it does is you can select an area. Okay. Once you get that selection, you can click and drag and move it to a different area. Okay. Once you get it there, you just hit enter on your keyboard and you can see that it took the tattoo from here and moved it over here. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take that. I'm going to move it up here. Okay. Enter on your keyboard. There we go. Now it doesn't look right up here because the, the colors way different. So on control Z, we'll just, we'll move it there for now. That'll work. Okay. And there you go. So content aware move tool. That's what it does. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to use the tools that you have available to you to go ahead and remove the rest of them. Okay. So personally for myself, I'm going to use a mixture of the spot healing brush tool and the healing brush tool. Uh, again, the spot healing brush tool, just clicking over things to remove them. And that works really well for these smaller areas. I used, it went too, too big on the ear one there. Okay. All right. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to my healing brush again with the healing brush, holding down alt to choose a target. And then clicking. There we go. Okay. Now I actually have, I brought in some of that redder face blemish. You can just click over that with that healing brush. And it does a, usually a pretty good job at removing it. Okay. Clear that up. There we go. So once you're all done, go ahead and click that visibility and you can see we started there. There we are. Pretty impressive. So, all right, let's move on to our next step. And our next step, we're going to go into a new file. So we're going to go file open and we're going to open up the tree picture that is in from Google Classroom. All right, and this is what our picture looks like. I'm going to zoom in. Again, I can hold down Alt and use my mouse wheel to zoom in. And you can see green hill, blue skies, a couple trees. Perfect. Now for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to try out a couple tools here. We're going to use the clone stamp tool, um, which is really interesting. Uh, and we're also going to use something in the edit menu called content aware fill. There it is, content aware fill. And we'll do that here in just a moment, okay? So the first things first, we're gonna use our clone stamp tool. And what we're gonna do, again, just like we did with the healing brush, you have to hold down Alt and click something to create a target. So in this case, I'm gonna choose this tree as my target, okay? So Alt, click, there you go. Now my brush, I'm gonna go change my brush actually. Okay, I want less of a faded brush. Let's see how it's the size on that. There we go. I want bigger. No, I want hardness up. Uh, that's too high. Okay, so again, there we go. I'm going to close that. Alt, target. we go not burn tool i'm going back i don't know why it jumped to a different tool i want clone stamp okay alt click there we go now the clone stamp what it allows you to do is actually take objects from areas around uh the photo and actually move them in so i could click here and as you could i'm going to hold down my click and you can see that i have the circle over here on the left hand side that's where my brush is but you can see where my target is, I have a crosshair there. 
And as I move my mouse around, that crosshair is going to move around. And it's painting what was there in a different area. So it allows you to clone things from one space to another. You can see I just added in a different tree. Now, same thing, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so I can see everything here. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get rid of some of these, okay? Now, Clone Stamp Tool, you can also use this to paint uh, areas of the sky in to remove things. So, uh, like, for example, here, I'm going to target this sky. I'm going to come down to the tree. And I'm going to click and paint around. Okay. Now, I'm just painting that area of the sky down here. You can see, though, it's causing problems for my hill. Okay, but it works just the same. I'm going to control Z. I'm going to undo that. So there are our trees. Now, the next thing we're going to do is something called content aware fill. And this is something that we can use to remove objects from our photos completely. Um, and Photoshop tries to decide what would be in that photo instead if that object weren't there. Okay, so for example, if I try and remove this tree, Photoshop's going to try and figure out what was behind that tree. It's really interesting. It's going to do that through patterns and textures. It's kind of neat. All right, so we're going to pick up right where we left off here. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up removing these trees here. Okay. Now, what we should have done a moment ago is we should have made a duplicate of our background. Again, just in case something goes wrong, we can always jump back to where we were. So again, we're going to right click on our background layer. We're going to duplicate our layer and we're going to call this no trees. All right. So there's our no trees layer. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make a selection and we're going to have a selection that includes some trees. Okay. So to do that, we're going to choose our lasso select tool on my screen. It's the third one down. It looks like a little thought bubble. Uh, yours might be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to select one of these trees and I'm going to select this middle one. And we're just going to draw around it as best we can. Okay. I'm going to hit edit. Content aware fill. Okay. And you, what you can do is you can look at a preview at what it's trying to do. What it's done to remove that. And actually that looks pretty good. So I like what it's done. What, what you're looking at in this preview over here on the, bat, on the uh, left hand side is what's in green is what it's sampling to try and fill in that background. And you can actually click and draw to take things out, like the trees. I don't necessarily want it to put in another tree, so I can paint that out. Um, just to make it look a little bit better. All right. Oh, I don't like what it did. So I'm going to undo that last bit. Sometimes it gets a little touchy. So, okay, that looks good. And then you also have these options over here on the on the left, um, sorry, on the right hand side. And you can check these out, see if it makes it better for you. In general, this one's not doing a whole lot of difference. Uh, interestingly enough, you can do some interesting ones like mirror. I'll do some weird stuff. Actually, that one did pretty good. Scale. Yeah, all good. All right. So what I'm going to do is over here where it says output settings and it says output to new layer. Um, I'm going to let's do current layer. OK, and what that's going to do is instead of making a completely new layer with that transparent uh, layer on top of it, it's going to apply this content aware fill to the layer that we're currently working on. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to hit control D and you can see. That's what it's taken out. All right, let's hop to the next one. Okay, I'm going to select tree. Edit. Content aware fill. Same song, second verse. Um, let's see. I honestly can't even tell. Oh, there were, used to be three trees there. That's how good this is. And now there are two. Okay. I think that looks pretty dang good. I'm going to say, okay, I'm not even going to mess with that one. All right. Now, 
what we can try and do now, since it's been doing a really good job at one at a time, we can try two at a time. And sometimes when you do multiple ones, it gets a little tricky. So we can try it, content aware fill. It's thinking about it. Yeah, it's got some weird, some weirdness happening here. Okay. Now, again, what we can do is we can get rid of areas on this to potentially fill that in. If we get rid of the grass, it'll stop sampling the grass. Although it put more in there. If you take out all the grass, we won't have any grass to look at. Okay. And it took out a bunch of the grass down below. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we've actually, uh, I've got an idea for that. Okay. So I think that looks good. I'm going to say, okay. And let's go back over here and let's do the same thing with this one here. So once again, making a selection, edit, content aware fill. Same thing as before, it made a big hill there. I don't necessarily want that. All right, we're gonna say okay. And there we go. Control D again to deselect. And there we go. So we've gotten rid of those trees. You can see that it's filled in uh, the sky in the background. I'm going to actually do the same thing there. I'm going to do a content aware fill so that it kind of fills in. I'm going to take away the grass. Because I want that seamless transition there. And I like what it's done there. So I'm going to say okay. Okay, control B. All right, so trees are gone. Sky background looks good. What we're going to do is we are going to go back to our original picture. So I'm going to hide this top layer. You can see that's where we started. That's where we're at. We have to bring back this grass. Okay. So what we can do is we can go to that background copy. I would recommend choosing the quick selection tool and just paint through the grass until you have a selection there. Now you may need to zoom in a little bit and make sure that you're not getting the tree. Again, holding down Alt does the opposite of the tool and we can take away some of that selection. That looks good, that looks good. Take that away and take away that, perfect. Okay, so now we have a selection of just the grass. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit Control C, Control V, and you can see that it made a layer of the grass right there, okay? Now, let's bring back our no trees layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and we're gonna drag that layer one with the grass on it. We're gonna click and drag that above our no trees layer. And you can see that it just brings in our grass, okay? Now we're gonna look at it. We're gonna clean up any imperfections that we see. We can use our spot healing brush. I can see some issues over here. You can use this. Whoop, I don't want to do that. You can use the spot healing brush to clear up some imperfections. Patch tool works also. You can choose weird areas. Whoop. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. Hold on. Deselect. So I like what that looks like right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to hide my background layer. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say merge visible. So it's going to combine both my grass layer and my no trees layer together into one. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the patch tool to clear up some of these imperfections. Like you can see there's a bit of a hard edge here on the sky. That looks a little bit goofy. So what I can do is I can click and draw around that and I can drag it out to here and it kind of smooths it out okay you can do the same with any other imperfections that you see oh that didn't work out okay that area there we're gonna click and drag that looks pretty good and i think that looks pretty dang good okay so there we go. We did it. We got rid of all those trees. So what we've learned so far is we've learned how to use the spot healing brush. We've learned how to use the healing brush, learn how to use the patch tool, content aware move. We've also learned how to use the clone stamp and how to use content aware fill. Okay. These are tools that you're going to be using quite a bit when you're making edits of your own uh, photography, whether you're making 
uh, uh, true to life edits, uh, ne just natural edits where you're fixing blemishes and whatnot, or if you're making something pretty crazy, uh, obviously the clone stamp tool is going to work really well for you and painting things out completely using content aware fill, uh, that can be very useful as well. So there you go. There's our tutorial lesson two on basic edits and, uh, I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right. Take care guys. It's been fun.